Test, 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 test. All right. How is everybody doing tonight? Notice a slightly different look in the live stream. So let me know what you think of it. <clears throat> so, you know, we can playing around with uh, NVIDIA broadcast. And what that is, is basically it's a green screen without a green screen. <laughs> So let me know what you think of it. Kind of, kind of looks a little, uh, Hey Sergio, how's it going? You know, yeah, I definitely wouldn't feel comfortable filming like this because of the aberrations and stuff like that. I don't know how well it comes off on stream, but Figured I'd play with it, see how it does on stream. What, Pat? The 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 mic thing bugs me a lot. <laughs> so cool, Sergio. RBRT. The T handles, huh? Oh, okay. It's cool. I, I, tend to not use i've i've only got actually sae um t handles um i just use long torques for what i do and that you know with quarter inch or three eighths um you know ratcheting ends on them i have a set of t handle uh met uh, sae uh hex that i use for a lot of tools um like i've got one T handle in my, actually, I think I've got two in my, uh, drawer of destruction for like cutoff wheels and that kind of stuff. Zaxi. No, <laughs> no, I'm not in an hourly shop. Long live flat rate. <laughs> Aaron, Aaron, Aaron. How you been doing, Aaron? But yes, I get to use tools. Uh, Sparky Seabiscuit, as I talked about in the video that went live Wednesday, I'm not disclosing anything about where I work. Um, it's just, I don't want... <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I don't need any harassment or any YouTube drama coming to my place of business. So it's, it's not going to be anything about where I work at all. Uh, I just, I, I've pissed off some very, um, well, I'm going to say it scummy people and they've done some stuff that is, you know, anyway, <laughs> So no, I'm not, I'm not, you know, not talking about the, my, my employment situation at all. You're fine. See, uh, Sparky, it's, it's, it's nothing to do with you. <laughs> LOL. Uh, Dodge Sportsman. Um, <laughs> that video was just in response to like, I've gotten, at least four to five comments like that on, on almost every video. And it's, it's easier just to put out a stupid video like that and get it, you know, put out there. Cause it like shuts down a lot of those comments and, 
And like, um, I'm sorry, I'm a little gassy apparently tonight. Uh, but, <laughs> um, and like I had comments on that video that like almost every stream I do, I get those comments and you know, it, it's, it's easier in the stream because I can immediately comment to them and all that. Whereas on YouTube, their notification system is gone. It's weird because like I used to get like masses of emails from YouTube about comments on my videos. Those have completely stopped on my main channel. On my other channel, I still get those emails. I didn't change anything. I didn't opt out of anything. I don't know. Um, but also my YouTube dashboards are also different between the two channels. So it's like, you know, same version of, of, you know, Chrome. And I'm look I'm looking at a very different kind of, not really dashboard, but it's different in, in some of the things that it does. But well, cool, Aaron, uh, taking apart a battery pack and servicing it. Um, that's interesting. <laughs> Alexi, what's going on? Um, so you get y'all are uh, doing uh, EVs now, huh? That is cool. Um, Dodge Sportsman, it's, I'm a, I'm, I've been told I'm a very polarizing personality. <laughs> um, you know, so that's fine. Um, if you're in, if, you know, to give you some background, if you're in, you in content creation, you're going to have to get used to people being, ugly. I mean, you know, not like personal attacks and I'll, I'll <laughs> Glenn, shut up. <laughs> All stars cars, by the way. Um, you, you have to have a very, a thick skin because people will just kind of pick on you. And I, the, my policy on that, on the channel has always been, you can argue with my points all you want. I mean, if you disagree with me, not going to delete your comment. You could, you know, say that I'm completely wrong. Give me reasons why I'm wrong or just say I'm wrong and I'm not going to touch your comment. But you do a personal attack on me, immediate uh, deletion. And if I see a pattern, you get you get what's called shadow banned, which where you can comment all you want. It'll never show up on anybody's computer but yours. Um, but that doesn't happen too often. Uh, Peter would you ask, would you still continue discussing diagnostic issues? You've been caught under work, diag drivability concerns without mention of the shop or the customer. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm, you know, it's, it's just not going to be, it's mainly about where I work, my coworkers. It's not going to be any of that kind of stuff. There's not going to be any kind of what's going on around the shop, not filming. It's all going to be focused on. I'm not going to be, you know, like, you know, I'll point out Aaron in the chat is a former coworker of mine. I talked about Aaron in my videos. That's just not going to happen anymore. Aaron's a good kid. You know, he's in the chat, you know, it's, but it, that's, that's kind of stuff's not going to happen anymore. Joshua Villeneuve, are there any other brands besides Lang, Leslie, OTC, Calvan that make good automotive tools for other companies that you know of? Uh, Vim Tools, um, Astronomatic, uh, Mueller Cups. Um, trying to think of some others. Um,
Okay, Aaron. So you're doing hybrids now? Cool. Um, Eric, <laughs> funny. <laughs> Bobby, hey, I'm just here to get a job, ya hobo. <laughs> uh, Nick, yes. All Stars agrees with me. Being a YouTube creator is uh, isn't for the faint of heart. It's really not. You, you get a lot. It and you know, I've gotten comments. You know, now and in the past, where you know your content sucks, you suck. You know, and it it it, it can be really brutal on your you know mental health. When, you know, a bunch of people are saying, you know, your video sucks and you put a lot of work into it. Now it may still suck. I'm not saying, you know, it doesn't, you know, it's just, it's, it, it can be tough. There's no way around it. <laughs> uh, Anthony, I would like to see more stuff on scopes. It's, it's the problem with doing scope content is it, it's hard to have, you know, like if, at the old shop, um, it was hard having a broken car in front of me. You know, I could get c scope captures and that kind of stuff and do a, a after hours kind of talking thing, but it's not very dynamic. Um, and I tried to do some videos where I was, testing on cars and that kind of stuff, but it was just so hard to have a broken car in front of me. Um, you know, high volume shop, you know, world pack used to be really good at having parts in stock. So chances are, if I diagnosed a car, it was fixed and in the parking lot and done that day for a lot of things, unless I was waiting for a part. And, you know, so that's why, even why I moved, all my camera equipment to the shop was so I could kind of stay late and film some of that stuff, but it just never seemed to work out where I was able to have a broken car that I could diagnose, you know, and prove it with a scope. So it's just, it's really hard. Um, but there, I mean, Super Mario does a lot of scope stuff. I know it's a lot of European stuff, but you know, there's Eric O, they do a bunch of scope stuff. So it's, it's just, you know, it's hard to film that kind of stuff for me. Oz, I greased my front end earlier today. Yeah, I bet you did. He's talking about his F-150. Um, yeah, Lyle makes some good stuff, Glenn. Uh, Scientist 100. Uh, yeah, I'm not getting back into HD trucks. I'm too old and fat for that kind of stuff. <laughs> Bobby <laughs> talk about a polarizing personality. That would be F Bobby. <laughs> um, <laughs> Nick Mayo. Uh, I don't know how you do it all. I would love to record my repairs at my dealer, but I wouldn't want to deal with the criticism. That, I mean, that is, it's a part of being a YouTuber is you're going to be criticized and, you know, you have to have a thick skin. I mean, it might be, you know, <clears throat> like, you know, like valid criticism, my early videos, the audio and the videos were garbage. I can't deny that. My audio was just for any aspiring YouTubers out there. Do not get a GoPro. Please do not get a GoPro. There's, you know, tons of people that can test to them. They're not good cameras. They're not good cameras unless you're strapping it to a car, driving it down the street or something like that. That's where they're useful. They're action cameras. Their audio is garbage. Their video is okay i mean my phone does better uh, my phone does better video than a gopro um but yeah i mean I, and there were that was a hundred percent legitimate concerns 
you know, if you're getting into doing YouTube videos, invest in a set of headphones, even earbuds, because <laughs> I know everybody focus and, you know, people focus on the visuals parts of YouTube, but audio is actually immensely more important when it comes to YouTube. If your audio is garbage, doesn't care what your video looks like, they're going to bail a lot faster. Just something I've definitely learned. Um, but, you know, most I wish most people, you know, would listen to... Buffalo Tools, Dodge Sportsman. Um, but yeah, a lot of people um, in the in the creator space, not so less so with the TikTokers, um, but use your phone, you know. Um, cameras are good enough. Audio, if you add a, you know, earbuds to it are better than anything a GoPro is ever going to do. But, you know, in the YouTuber space, there's a lot of equipment envy. Um, you know, it's, it's literally, well, I got to have X, Y, Z camera. Otherwise I'm not, you know, I don't have good enough equipment. You can shoot on your phone and, um, you know, you're fine. Um, you know, I've, I've upgraded equipment a lot since then, but it, it's not necessary. Um, I love the nation of Israel, uh, to do scope content. You need broke parts on hand for demos. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it, it really, you need to do it properly and tell a good story, which is what, you know, creating that kind of content is you need a broke car, prove it's a broke car then prove it's a fixed car. And, you know, Erico, because he has control of his shop and all that, because he owns it, it's really easy for him to do that. He can just pull the camera out, film the before and the after, and it's, you know, he it's his business. He can do how he wants. You know, when you work for somebody, you, you really can't do that. Uh, F. Bobby, I wish my boss would put out content. Again, we do so much scope work at our shop. F. Bobby, I would love to see you on camera more. That'd be cool. Uh, Jacob Bell, thoughts on coking tools? Coking tools are excellent. I don't have a lot of coking stuff, but anything I've touched from them has been excellent. Uh, Warren B., are you going to review Tesla's diagnostic tools and eBay air tools? Uh, definitely not eBay air tools. And I do not have any access to a Tesla to test. I only know one person that owns a Tesla. Mm, I, I, I'm going to rephrase that. I don't know one person directly that owns a Tesla. I know some other people that indirectly friends of friends that owns Teslas. And he's one of the service advisors at the old shop. So I don't think he's going to let me, uh, um, mess with his Tesla. <laughs> Um, Dodge Sportsman, uh, Coke and Tools are fantastic guests. Yeah, I mean, he says they're better than Snap-on, I think. I, I don't know. I haven't used them extensively to say something like that, but they are awesome. Nick Mayo, that's all I use mine for. I'm assuming he was talking about GoPros. Uh... That is cool, man. Driving on the, uh, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that, uh, track in Japan next week. That's awesome. That sounds like a heck of a lot of fun. But for content, eh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, the, 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 I have a GoPro. I still have my original GoPro. That's where I started my channel. It was a horrible decision. Um, Ostar's Cars uses a Sony Handycam. That was my second camera purchase, was a 4K uh, Sony uh, camcorder. Uh, excellent camera. Um, run for hours. Mine started giving me some problems. The case was breaking. 
and um, I had a glitch where if you turn the, the screen a certain way, it would green screen. Um, that's when I got my first Sony uh, A6400, A6, which is probably 90% of the content on my channel was filmed on. <laughs> Dodge Sportsman, you should do some cigar reviews and tools. Maybe drinks, cigars, tools, and whiskey. Hell, <laughs> I might do that. Um, the problem with that is, is cigars basically banned on YouTube. Um, I've watched, um, for those that's, that smoke cigars, I'm sure you've heard of uh, Brian Glenn from Cigar, Cigar Obsession. They demonetized his, his entire channel um, and basically screwed him out of his, his, uh, business. Well, he's, he moved over to other sites and he makes money different ways, but they are very anti, uh, anybody in the gun, you know, F Bobby can probably attest to this. They are very anti gun. Uh, they're anti, they haven't actually gone after whiskey channels yet, but they've definitely gone after, after cigar channels, whiskey channels are probably in that crosshairs and gun channels are very, very, you know, like they don't allow, you know, mag dumps. Um, Forgotten Weapons is a great example of that where he just, um, he keeps going to other platforms trying to make it work. He's on uh, LTT's float plane um, and now he's got another, but he's working with a bunch of creators because of YouTube's policies on guns. Valamilk, what's going on? I hear you're back being a YouTuber again. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> LOL. F, F Bobby up. <laughs> Uh, Beavis Cornholio is Luber Goober going to make any more appearances? Yes, of course he is. Can't leave Luber Goober alone. Um, spe you know, especially now that I'm a TikToker, <laughs> and he would be perfect for TikTok. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> um, thoughts on uh. Capri tools, Capri, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I've got Capri tools. They're, they're really good. I've been really impressed with the quality of them. Um, I bought a set of um, hex from them, SAE hex. So what, you know, it's not something I use on a regular basis, but I realized like all of my SAE hex sockets except a couple have just disappeared. So I bought a set of Capri thinking, you know, Capri thinking, you know, I'll, I'll use them here or there. Excellent. I've been really impressed with their quality. Um, F Bobby Capri is one of the tools companies like Olsa who pay people to say good things about their stuff. I'm not sure how good their stuff actually is. But just keep that in mind when you hear good things. I've never taken money from Capri. I've never gotten any tools from them. I paid for them. I've gotten stuff from Olsa Tools, um, but they've never paid me anything. Um, so they've never paid me. I've, I've never taken uh, money from either of those companies. Um just, just FYI, I, I do it for content. If, you know, the thing is, is if, if a company sending me money for a tool, you know, set, set actually giving me money to review a tool, what's the point? Um, it's just a commercial at that point, you know, like, you know, I reviewed the three row recently socket holders they are on the wall back there. And, you know, it's, it's, something people might be interested in. Um, but no, I, they didn't send me any money. 
uh, Renegade. I use a Sony ZV-1. I'm I'm a I'm a Sony fanboy. Um, I made a mistake uh, for the home studio and bought a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 6K. It's a great camera. <laughs> I miss Sony autofocus. <laughs> um, yeah, that's 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 you know. Other than that, I love the Blackmagic. Um, my camera rig is awesome, but it's a rig, not a camera. Um, Darren Locke, thoughts on SK Tools? Um, the only, I've got experience with some of their older stuff, which was hit and miss depending on who owned the company at the time. Um, my only recent experience with that was, uh, a wrench test where I did th- a, th- a video series on testing wrenches and unintentionally copied other YouTubers but SK was the literal only one that broke the open end and flew off. Um, <laughs> so that's my opinion on SK. <laughs> Is, you know, an old craftsman, you know, tore the, the snot out of it. SK literally broke in two. Uh, Valamilk, yeah, um, Cinematic mode on the iPhone is actually really good. Yeah, uh, I I I don't know if I talked about it before, but you know, film with your phone. You know, you know I can I can. Um, there's a to give an example. I mean, a uh, he's a content creator. He's also has a production company. He's an actual has a production company. He does commercials and you know corporate videos and all sorts of stuff. But he, you know, he's like, I can, I can film a a professional looking video with an iPhone and you can, you know, it's really a lot of camera stuff is about lighting more than it's the camera. So. (laughs) Uh, Luber Goober, (laughs) all stars cars, the Luber Goober vids we love. Oh, I didn't know that. No. Post in ages. Um, censorship at its finest. Yeah, Glenn. I mean, it, it it's there's reasons for it. Um, especially in the gun segment, you know, advertiser friendly kind of stuff. But yeah, I mean, it it's my hair's going weird. Um, you know, I can kind of understand it, especially for, you know, the gun crowd, but like cigars, it's a, it's a niche hobby. You know, you don't, you know, you can put it behind age restrictions and all that, but like you've got other channels that are openly smoking, you know, rather illegal substances and they don't do anything about it. So it's just, it's kind of messed up. Uh, Ace share. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you for being the amazing resource you were when I was first starting out as a mechanic at a gas station at a, at a job. I could only dream of about a few years ago, thought hard work and resilience. I'm glad you're doing a successful whole point of this channel was to help young technicians. Uh, Scientist 100. Capri is a set that I have. The metal is soft, but okay for the price. I mean, I've, 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 you know, I, like I said, I have limited um, issues with Oh, F Bobby, you're fine. I just wanted to clarify that for the chat. Um, you're fine on, I, you know. Olsa has been a brand that has made a name for itself by going through social media and that kind of stuff. Um, but you're fine. Um, I only have, I think, the one Capri set. And I've, rat, you know, 
reefed on it pretty hard and did not damage the tool at all. It broke the, the hex loose. I think I was working on a piece of equipment. Um, that was kind of weird. Um, so, uh, you know, I don't, I, I, they've been good for me so far. Um, Uh, Nick Mayo, now that you've been out for a while, what's your opinion on those icon boxes? They are decent. I mean, price price to performance, um, Harbor Freight has some deals. They're not Snap-on quality. They're not Matco quality. They're not Mac quality. The Icon series is a nice middle tier. They're above the kind of, you know... Home Depot, you know, Husky kind of stuff. I think they're a little bit above that, but they're not. They're not top tier stuff. Let's see who's texting me while I'm. All right. Sorry, my wife drove to. My wife and daughter drove to Kentucky. They're going to kayak through a cave. But anyway, <laughs> they are safe in Kentucky. Um, Jacob Ball, thoughts on the uh, Mac RBRT wrenches? Um, watch tomorrow's video. <laughs> that, that's kind of what I'm talking about. So yeah, watch tomorrow's video. Glenn, don't forget how important hair and makeup is. Well, of course. Um. <laughs> Uh, Nick Mayo, legal in, in California where YouTube is. Yeah, but it's not legal everywhere. And, you know, like part of the reason, again, I'm not talking, I'm talking cigars. Cigars is something that for adults, you know, you have to be 18 to smoke cigar, actually 21 here, you know, to smoke cigars. It's not for kids but they're not giving, they're not doing any of the age restriction stuff that even, you know, hang on a second. All right, sorry about that. I forgot to give uh, my mother-in-law her uh, nightly pills. Um, background, my mother-in-law has dementia, so we have to make sure she takes her pills. So, sorry. <laughs> With my wife and daughter gone and just me, the son, and the daughter, I forgot. So... Anyway, um, getting back to it. Sorry about that. Kevin McLean, paid or not tool review. I appreciate your unbiased opinions, whether it's good or bad. You've been around the block and know a good one or bad tool. Yeah, I, I hope so. <laughs> um, tool reviews are not paid for. Um, the rare sponsorships I've done, you know, it's... Paid advertising from like um, Quaker State, stuff like that. Um, you know, they paid me to go to the Atlanta race and, you know, that kind of stuff. But tool is just, I might get product. And it doesn't matter who whether I get it for free or not. 
I'm going to give you my honest opinion. So, anyway. Uh, Daniel BC, what was the fastest car you've worked on and do you have to drive fast vehicles so you can diagnose the issue? Um, fastest vehicle was probably a twin turbo AMG. Um, didn't really abuse it. Um, I did brakes on it. It was a really expensive brake job. Um, got on it a little bit, you know, but not really enough to, um, you know, break any laws or anything like that. But I will tell a story. So we had a front wheel drive Monte Carlo SS, which is a 5.3 front wheel drive, and it came in for a drivability issue. Drivability issue was a misfire. And I did spark plugs and wires, no coils, and but it also had a ABS light on it. So ABS and traction control did not work. And, well, obviously it was... You know, I needed to put it under load to make sure the misfire was gone. Well, traction control didn't work. So I pulled around and it was towards the end of the day. Customers wanted the car back. So I needed to prove to myself the car was fixed because it was only a misfire under load. Now I was, you know, certain I had fixed it, but got to verify it. So I pulled out, chirped the tires you know, <laughs> pulling onto a major road. I chirped the tires. I nailed it and got up to the speed of the road and backed off of it. Next traffic light, I did the exact same thing. Didn't chirp the tires, but got onto it, got up to the speed limit and, you know, got off the gas, slowed down, turn and went to, you know, continue back. I got pulled over. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> cop read me a little riot act, did not write me a ticket, but did yell at me. <laughs> um, but I was, you know, I was like, I got to verify the car is fixed. <laughs> Has a misfire, had a misfire. So I did get pulled over in a Monte Carlo SS for chirping the tires, pulling out of the parking lot, <laughs> which I've done in my truck. <laughs> so anyway... Uh, Jonathan Campos, I have a set of Capri, Capri, um, wrenches. I do a lot of alignments and they have been worked wonderful. You know, I, like I said, the quality of the ones I've seen have been good. I have no complaints. Actually, the, I think it was Capri. I did a wrench. I did a, um, that was part of my wrench test and they were, they're made by Cabo, the same company that makes gear wrenches, wrenches, the Easy Red, Mountain, all those kind of things, um, Matco's wrenches. Uh, so I didn't have any problems with them. I think they performed exactly the same way as the um, Matco and gear wrench. Um Uh, Daniel BC, uh, Harbor Freight knows how to joke with the uh, 10 millimeters. So you can just buy a pack of 10 millimeters. Um, yeah. Astro pneumatic has a, a 10 pack, you know, and it says on the package, uh, you know, just be aware you, you open this package. They're likely to escape. So, uh, Ronnie Martinez, can we talk about Cornwell and branded impact sockets? Are they close to snap on quality? I was, <clears throat> I've only known one tech that had uh, Cornwell impact sockets and I would probably not put them, they're good. I don't know if they, I would put them next to snap on. They are made by Cornwell at their plant. They, they are, that's what they are. They're a tool manufacturer. Uh, but I would, I don't know if I would put them, um, quite on that level, but they're, they're relatively close. 
but the the biggest problem with Cornwell is the dealer. Is the, the dealer you're going to buy from established? Is he going to be around in a couple years? Because that was the biggest problem we had with Cornwell. I've only ever had one Cornwell dealer, and he went out of business. So that's my reservation with Cornwell. Uh, best extractor sockets. Um, I've had really good luck with um, the Hanson ones. I've had good luck with Blue Point. I've had good luck with the Matco ones. Um, so I know a lot of people like the uh, the new Gear Wrench stuff. I haven't used a set of them yet, but uh, you know that's plenty of options. Um, you know, <laughs> Glenn, funny, funny, funny. Yeah. As I explained, forgot to give my mother-in-law her pills. <laughs> uh, Zephyl, uh, no, she has dementia. <laughs> um, uh, that's, that's one of the issues we've had dealing with around here. My mother-in-law has uh full frontal, um, frontal lobe dementia, which is the worst kind of dementia to have. And she's not having a good time right now. Um, you know, she's it's dementia. So, <laughs> uh, Mike Mata, anything AMG or BMW M will be expensive. Had a, uh, BMW M5, $3,500 break job. I think that was 6500 if I remember right. ISO, what's going on? Um, Daniel, BC, what's your favorite automotive color? My favorite is GM's dark metallic blue on my track WA722. Hugger orange. Best color ever. Hugger orange. Uh, Nick Mayo, Astro Pneumatics 10 millimeter set is actually a legit good set. Yeah, it is. Astro Pneumatic, I rarely find anything wrong with their tools. Um, so yeah, no, I mean, it, 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 it is a good set. It's just, they, they ride into that same, um, joke about 10 millimeters. Uh, chirping. Zephyl chirping. I didn't, I didn't, wasn't sitting there doing a, you know, nasty burnout. I chirped them. Uh, rubber, a uh, burning rubber is not necessarily illegal, but road pirates will give you all sorts of tickets if they want. Uh, when I bought my Mustang, when I was 18, I got a, um, what, what was the ticket for, uh, Exhibition of speed. Sad part is I wasn't burning rubber. I was trying not to hit the car in front of me that decided to turn without using a turn signal. And dropped it into first gear, sidestepped a clutch, tripped the tires after that, and the guy wrote me up for, for exhibition of speed. So, yeah. Um, seven sixteen auto. Are you working for a private shop? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not doing uh, municipalities or anything like that. Uh, famous slick Rick. Hey, my friend. It's good to see you. I pray that you and your family are doing good. Right back at you, my man. Um, yeah, we're doing great. Um, my wife's company she works for is having a few problems, but you know, the mother-in-law is more or less stable. Kids are doing well in school. Um, other than my, my daughter dropping one class. Um, but you know, college life and she had a very aggressive <laughs> schedule this se semester. So, um, <laughs> Oz says, hopefully I am in a I, I am abiding by our community guidelines. I would hope so. You're a moderator, dude. <laughs> You're in blue. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, Mike Mata, yeah, it was really expensive. I think like half the brake job had to come from uh, Mercedes. Uh, I don't. I think one set of pads, one set of rotors had to come from Mercedes World Pack. Nobody else had them. I think the other ones we were able to get through World Pack. Um, but yeah, it was it was expensive. Uh, ISO, can we ever have a live that talks about diagnostics like tools and methods? Would that topic work for a live? Yeah, generally. Um, yeah, I mean, it. yeah, we can definitely do that one. Uh, Adam, all auto techs need to go on strike for higher pay. Um, I don't think a stri one, a strike for, you know, I mean, look at, you know, the recent writer strike and there was the amount of scabs on that. Um, and that's not a, that, that's what they call them. So don't get mad at me for calling them that, but we don't have the kind of organization that would allow us to hundred percent shut down the country. Uh, cause that's what it would do is shut down the country. Uh, but, um, you know, and that would probably get the government involved if that could happen, which I, it does, it, it can't happen, but we definitely need, um, it's getting better. It's getting better every day. Shops are realizing they got to pay. They're doing, you know, benefits and they're actually paying a lot better than they used to. Uh, Jacob Ball, favorite car manufacturer to work on um, <laughs> in general or flat rate? <laughs> uh, flat rate, give me BMW or Volkswagen or Audi. <laughs> um, as far as actually working on them, um, generally General Motors um, or Honda for the first category. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's, that, that's, that's kind of my, my criteria is how much, how much, how many hours can I make off of it and that kind of stuff more than, you know, what the car is or anything like that. Um, I don't know what an Autobahn is, Dan Daniel. Uh, Ostar, do you think the UAW strike will have a major impact on part supply? Oh, yes. Yep, that is all part of the UAW. The parts department is at General Motors is going to screw over um, or at all the, the you know, because that's who distributes the parts, UAW. <sighs> Uh, Daniel asks, what is the hardest GM vehicle to work on in recent years? And when I work on a dealership, how old are likely to be working on less than depending on what part of the country you are in, um, they're going to be eight years or newer. I mean, they're, they're, all, they're not going to be very old generally. Um, some dealerships will actually literally say after this year, we don't work on them at all. So, <clears throat> Um, hardest general motors really generally aren't hard to work on. Um, there's certain jobs that suck on general motors, you know, um, you know, like doing a, uh, blend door actuator on a, uh, Silverado that's right by the gas pedal. Those tend to suck. <clears throat> um, but it's, it's not really hard. It's just awkward. <laughs> uh how to auto repair it already has i work for gm yeah yeah i mean it, it's it's you know that's how they send out parts paul uh paulo fiera good evening um any suggestions for a really good e-torque set? I'm doing a steering box on a freight learner and the rust on the e-torques bolts, and I'm afraid of rounding them. Um, <clears throat> Snap-on, really good. Uh, the OTC kit's really good. The um, 
Vim tools are really good. Those would be my main suggestion. Um, yeah, Mike Mata. Yeah, Germans pay good. Yes, they do. <laughs> Even warranty is good sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> Adam, I do want to say thank you to Amazon making it easier to get tools instead of buying up tool trucks. Yeah, no, I, I, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't ever buy stuff off Amazon or put Amazon links in my videos. <laughs> oh, I don't think I can. Let me see if I can, if it's here somewhere. May not be. Oh, damn, where is it? There it is. All right, so I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, Add this to the the the, the uh, I pinned a uh, hat to the uh, the the uh, chat because I got requested about hats, you know, dad hats, trucker hats, and I'm, last time I looked, uh, Spring did not have any dad hats, so I've added dad hats with the FRM logo to the store. So feel free to buy some if you want to. But anyway, I just remembered that because of the Amazon thing, but yeah. Um, so I added hats. So anyway, they now have now sell them so you can buy them. Uh, but anyway, um, getting back to the question. Oh, Autobahn, not Autobahn, Autobahn. Um, yes. Um, what was your original question? <laughs> uh, Audubon will not fix our uh, itch issues in it in the United States. Trust me. Drive on 285 sometime around Atlanta. People think it's already the Autobahn. <laughs> so. Uh. Paulo, we work on Rolls Royce and Bentleys at our shop. Those are challenging. I have never, I've only, I, I've there has only been one Rolls Royce in a shop I've ever worked at, and I did not touch it. Uh, another technician messed with it, and that, to give you an idea of the era, it had the alien blood uh, brake fluid in it, which is green brake fluid. It's weird. You have to buy it from Rolls. It's ungodly expensive and a pain in the butt, but, uh, don't have any experience working on them, but yeah, hydraulics from hell on the, those, the alien blood friend of mine actually does a uh, brake system replacements up in the Northeast on, uh, old Rolls Royces or he retired now, so he doesn't do them much anymore, but Scott, yeah, no, we we can do that next week. I will be more than happy to do that. Yeah, ISO it's spelled, spelled Autobahn. Renegade, I tried to renew my YouTube Premium membership. They went up to 139 plus tax for a total of 158. Ouch, um, that sucks. Uh, I don't have YouTube Premium. I have, I have <laughs> three different channels, so. Um, <laughs> I'm doing YouTube premium on three channels because depending on what I'm watching, I watch it on different channels. But anyway, uh, Daniel, do you have any funny customer stories? Uh, I got lots of those. Um, Zephol ditched a cop because of expired tabs. I assume that means tags. 
Uh, found me two weeks later, wrote me six tickets and threatened to impound the car. Even got a ticket for no muffler after I pointed out. Thankfully, all dismissed. Yeah, Mike Mata, that, that's the ones I pointed out are chamfered. Uh, Daniel BC and warranty work. Is there any such thing as called greased, uh, greased ball joints? There are some rare ball joints in general motors that are greased, but almost all of them are sealed. So you don't be, you know, you're not greasing ball joints at a, uh, at a GM dealership unless you're doing aftermarket. Uh, Zaffel, I wish all bear bearings and joints were greasable. Non-greasable is bogus garbage. Yeah, I, I do agree with that. But in this, the defense of that, there's a lot of really bad greasable ball joints. Uh, Mike Swindell, dude, man, long time no here. How you been doing? I'm doing great. Uh, Zephyl, these are older ones and they don't. Um, I don't know if I can find it. Well, that sucked. Yeah, it's mineral oil based. And it is not DOT approved. Um, see if this. Yeah, this right here. It's green. It looks weird. They call it alien blood. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it's mineral based, so it's not uh, DOT approved. Uh, ISO, when someone flexes their Rolls Royce or Bentley, I laugh. I'm like, bro, learn to repair it. Then you can flex. Anybody can drive, drive a car. Few can fix it. Um, yeah, that's not the clientele Rolls Royce is looking for. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it's the, the thing is, is the, the old, you know, it's, it's like the BMW crowd where they're on your third or fourth owner. That's usually that Rolls Royce. They're on the third or fourth. Um, Jeremy Wampler. First time scanner purchase advantages and or disadvantages to the Zeus or Autel. <clears throat> Disadvantage Zeus <clears throat> cost, cost, cost. Um, the Zeus software generally works on e everything that is in the scan tool generally works most of the time. I mean, a high percentage of the time. Don't, don't mistake that <clears throat> the scoop, <clears throat> the scope is usable. You know, it's definitely, you can, you know, work your entire career using that scope. So don't think I'm bad mouthing the scope. The graphing on it is second to none. But again, the cost for the cost, oh, excuse me, for the cost of an, for, for the cost of a Zeus, which is the last time I checked, $14,000, you can buy a Autel, a launch and a Pico scope and a laptop to run the Pico scope and still have le money left over. Um, the Autel or a launch or any of the variations that they're same companies, 
the graphics not as good. Um, there are going to have some th options in the tool that do not work with that particular model. Their uh, their interface is a little more nuanced. There's it's there's some learning curve getting used to Autel or Launch. Um, so you know there there's some compromises you make as far as the graphing and all that, but overall the Autel or the Launch do more things than the Snap-on. The the fact of the matter is is a lot of features that Snap-on does not have, Autel and Launch will have. Um, and really, I'd suggest you get a Launch and an Autel because usually that'll cover a lot of the holes that either tool has. Because trust me, once you get advanced diagnostics, you will run into holes where Snap-on cannot do it. It literally cannot do it. But it will hold your hand and give you some really nice uh, graphs to look at. And again, the scope is usable. So, you know, that, that's my opinion on that. Body styles. <laughs> How to auto repair. Body style. Chevrolet. Specifically, uh, silver autos are much harder to work on than the old body style. I don't find that too much. Um, the, the, my 2020 is, is more difficult than the last body style. Uh, I will say that. So, um, but I, I, none of them I think are really bad to work on. Uh, Yosip, uh, what do you think about Mr. Subaru? <laughs> um, I mean, seems like a nice guy, but it seems like all he's trying to do is get you to click in his his link in his profile to buy his whatever tool he's hawking. <laughs> um, I mean, you can definitely tell who sponsors him, and you know, works for him. I guess he's got a lot more views and subscribers than I do, so I don't know what to say on that. But you know, he does definitely seem to, especially his uh, shorts are sweet and to the point link in the description link in the description link in the description <laughs> uh paulo can get can't get the castro lhm alien blood anymore can get similar alternatives from the uk yeah i, I haven't tried to buy it ever <laughs> but i know back when I, the shop i worked at that worked on that one we had to get a bunch of it and then we wasted a lot of it bleeding those brakes out. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Zephel. Um, uh, <laughs> is there any prerequisite to wearing a dad hat besides having a few rug rats? Uh, <laughs> uh, Yeah, as I'm not gonna. <laughs> um, follow. I, no, I haven't lost any. I, there, the thing about it, my weight is it goes up and down, up and down, up and down. Uh, I'm trying to be good about not eating a bunch of of junk late at night, which has always been my problem. Not, it's not that my my I eat that much or anything. It's just like. Like I've talked about before, if I, you know, I eat breakfast, if, if I eat any sort of lunch, then I don't eat a good dinner and then I'm hungry at 10 o'clock at night. So I eat junk and then, um, get fatter. So, <laughs> the rock and roll hair, uh, the old man hair, the gray, um, Mike has Clint Eastwood good looks. <laughs> Um, Zephyl, um, I mean, Snap-on has, has demo units, um, and Mac has demo units. So there are ways to demo the tool, but you got to have access to those trucks. Um, but yeah, Snap-on does have demo units. Uh, Apollo, been impressed by the Matco Maximus scanner. Not cheap, but works on a lot of weird stuff. 
like modern Rolls Royce and Bentley, that's a launch tool. It it's it it surprised me how much stuff the launch tools will do, which are now my go-to scanner. Um, Daniel, have you ever had a customer with such a beat of a vehicle that was full of rust, but they wanted to fix it? Um, <laughs> highly discouraged in the South. <laughs> um, the, 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 probably the worst, they didn't want to fix it, especially after they got our quote. Um, it had a, it had a fuel leak and it had a fuel leak on top of the tank and it was a GM vehicle and like the exhaust would had to come out. The rear suspension on this particular car had to be moved. So there's probably going to be collateral damage to the suspension and, um, cause it was all wheel drive, I believe. If I remember right, but I know the exhaust had to come out and we quoted them, you know, new fuel pump, possibly lines. Um, cause it was old enough that it was had metal lines, which oddly enough were still available at the time. Um, they were encur- encouraged to, to junk the vehicle. Um, but now we, I didn't realize really see a lot of, rusty vehicles that the customer really wanted. I mean, dangerous rusty vehicles that customers wanted to, wanted to repair. Most times when we explain to them, your frames brought it out. This needs to go to a junkyard, not be fixed. They generally didn't have them fixed. So, uh, Jeremy, uh, Jeremy, uh, Wampler, Already running into that with a shop Zeus charging shop, changing shops at the moment. The new one doesn't have a launch or all tell. And I've been in the market for five ish years now. Yeah. I mean, that's you're if you're doing advanced diagnostics, you're going to run into the limits of, of a snap on scan tool. There's no way around it. Um, you know, it's just a fact of life for snap on gears and things. Mac Cornwell have a great deal on locking pliers right now. That's cool. Uh, AC Delco has a bunch of different flu- uh, fluids. Um, AC Delco has a bunch of products. Some are good, some are bad. Uh, GM top engine cleaner is awesome. Um, Jeremy Wampler asked if they if um, Launch has a scop a scope scanner combo. They have a two channel scope that the VCI is the scope part of it. It's two channel scope, but it's not part of the scan tool. They don't have a combo unit like that. Um, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, ISO, I have a topped on Phoenix light Two. Should I get the upgrade package to make it a lab scope or get a full Pico? Honestly, go full Pico. Um, get a laptop that has a touchscreen, um, decent enough processor, enough Ram and just do go that route much, much better. Um, the Pico software is just the, the edge up and the scope actually specs are better. So I would go that route. Uh, Apollo, <laughs> rusty stuff is so demoralizing. Everything is like, exponentially harder and tough, tough to estimate. Yeah, um, yeah, it, it it does complicate things, especially when you're dealing with you know needing fasteners and stuff like that. That was like, oh, well, that might not come off. We're gonna need that bolt. Oh, that two days out. <laughs> Run into that many times. Super B69, I work with Rust daily. I mean, you know. (laughs) 
Um, Super V, I'm a body guy in PA. Zephyl, <laughs> yeah, GM top engine cleaner, yeah. Nope, love, love GM top engine cleaner. Use the snot out of it. So we got any more questions? Because if 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 it's rounded down, I need to go feed the dogs because my wife's not here to give them dinner. <laughs> and oh, did I mention we have a dog with dementia too? <laughs> I'll talk about that real quick. Um, we have a dog with dementia too. <laughs> my um, this happened years ago. Um, my wife decided to foster a dog that had been in a no kill shelter for a year and had been in a cage for a year and we were fostering her and she had severe separation anxiety. She's a sweetheart dog. She, you know, has, you know, never, you know, the only time she's ever peed on the carpet is when it was our fault, not hers. You know, she held it as long as she could, but she has severe separation anxiety. Well, fast forward six years, and unfortunately now she has dementia, <laughs> so she's on medication too. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's, you know, she's been a good dog, and, you know, she has dementia, and, you know, She's she's doing all right, so we can't we can't put her down just because dementia. So she we've got her medicine kind of set, so she's okay. But anyway, um, how, uh, Andy Gomes, how do you deal with intermittent issues? Say a fault that happened three or four times, but you check the car and all the pins line up fine, no issues found. Drive the car several times, cannot replicate. I mark it, cannot replicate. If I can't replicate it, I can't fix it. There's you know, if the shop has a, um, you know, porter, send them out in a few more times. But if I can't replicate the problem, I can't diagnose the problem such I can't fix it. Sucks for the customer, but you got to give it back to them and wait for the, the problem to be more prevalent. It's just a fact of life. If you can't, you know, you can't diagnose a car that isn't broken in front of you. So... It, it is what it is. It's go ahead and, and, uh, you know, form the service rider. I can't die. Diag I can't diagnose it cause it's not broken right now. You know, if you, that's why it's really important. A service rider does his job cause, you know, when does it do it? When does it do it? When does it do it? You know, cause like if a customer gives you that inf information, you know, and as we're, where does it sometimes is, it can be really helpful when they said, well, it only does it going up this hill while I'm turning left here. That's some really good information. If it stalls out when you're turning left going uphill, that might be some good thing to replicate. But service riders rarely get that information. Uh, Jeremy Wampler, not familiar with the Pico scope software. Do you have a set? Do you have, do, does, do they have a similar setup for auto ranging or is it all shooting from the hip until you're used to it? They do not have like the snap on, um, troubleshooter kind of line. They don't have presets for most things. They do have some presets, um, but it's all you do is you set the, the the range will be set automatically to the widest range. And then you can on the fly change it. So if like you're on a 12 volt circuit, you can lower it down to 20 volts. If it's a, you know, 10 volts, et cetera, et cetera. Your time base is, is infinitely changeable. 
it's not really that hard if you're generally familiar with a scope how to use it. It's just, it's a little different than obviously a snap-on scope, but it really is not that hard if you have the basics of using a scope. Um, but it doesn't hold your hand like the snap-on does. Uh, Samuel Sonhart just upgraded my DVOM to the snap-on advanced, so I'm far I'm a big fan. I really like that that uh, DVOM. Paulo, uh, good hanging out. Appreciate it. Have a good night. <laughs> Hopefully this dementia is not transmittable. <laughs> yeah. It's not, unfortunately. It's just my mother-in-law is old. Uh, in case you don't know, my mother-in-law fell and broke her hip and a health event, a health, major health event can trigger dementia. And it did. She came back. She almost, you know, gave a healthcare worker access to her bank account, stuff like that. And then we had her tested, which took forever. Um, and, uh, we had confirmed diagnosis of front temple, front, front temporal dementia. So, so unfortunately, you know, my dog's just old, <laughs> really old, but she's lived a good life. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's, uh, it sucks getting old and, you know, losing your mind. You know, my wife, my wife actually asked me the other day, um, you know, is, am I going to get like that talking about her? And I'm like, maybe, but yeah, it is a, it is a tough thing to deal with, uh, Glenn. Um, but I get, I look back at her and I'm like, yeah, we know your family history. You don't know mine. <laughs> I don't have much family history. <laughs> You know, you know, people, people ask about my parents and my grandparents and all that kind of stuff. And it's like both of my legitimate grandparents, grandfathers died at 45, both of them. My mother's mother died shortly after childbirth. My grandmother on my dad's side did live till her eighties. Um, but like. You know, not a lot of direct history with my family, so. Zephyl, <laughs> uh, ever get into scopes that can decode CAN bus or other bus signals? No. Uh, Easy E heard cre uh, creatine helps with dementia. They're on. They're both on medications for dementia. Um, you know, I, I believe creatine helps with uh, preventing dementia, but sure, if it if it's a herbal remedy thing, my wife's probably already doing it. But yeah, no, I no Zephyl, I haven't ever gotten into uh, decoding CAN bus or other bus signals. Uh, not that deep. Um, you know, bits and bytes don't matter that much to me. You know. I worry about the communication, not the, uh, what it's communicating, <laughs> you know, that's, that's engineer kind of stuff, not technician kind of stuff. And I ain't customizing or anything like that, but all right. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, as long as your healthy is better, th as long as your health is better than a Penn star or four banger Hyundai engine, you're okay. <laughs> LOL, Glenn. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and end it here. Appreciate everybody stopping by. Uh, as always, thanks for watching. I am the Flat Raid Master.